The objective of this video is going to be to convert Haworth projections into a chair conformation. The key thing to remember is that stereochemistry is retained among these structures. And so what I mean by that is if something is going up on your Haworth projection, then it's also going to be going up on the chair conformation. If something is going down on the Haworth, then it's also going to be going down on your chair conformation. And so that's the biggest mistake that I see with students is that they have something that's going up on the Haworth, and then they put it going down on the chair. And so we're flipping the stereochemistry, and then we're no longer talking about the same molecule. It's going to be a different molecule. So make sure that you retain your stereochemistry. Anything up in one is going to be up throughout the rest of the structures. So before we start, I'm going to go ahead and number my carbons to make it easier when assigning the substituents on my chair. So carbon number 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And I'll do the same for the chair. So the left of the oxygen is going to be carbon number 5. Carbon number 5 is attached to carbon number 6, but I don't know if it's going up or down just yet, so I'm not going to draw on carbon number 6. 4, 3, 2, and 1. And I'll do the same here. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And also remember that the chair chair from your 112A, both of these chairs exist in equilibrium, but one is going to be more favored than the other, and we'll get to which one is more favored towards the end. But make sure that you draw both, and you're comfortable drawing both, and you're comfortable drawing your axial and equatorial lines. And so the way I approach these problems is I draw in both my chairs, and then I draw in empty lines for the axial and equatorial positioning. This way, I'm able to get make sure that if something's going axial on one carbon, going up, that it's going down on the adjacent carbons, and to make sure that I don't miss any substituents um, by skipping any carbons. So let's get started. So carbon number 5 on our Haworth projection has a CH2OH, and it's going up. And so again, stereochemistry is retained. So when I'm doing my chair conformation, the CH2OH is going to be going up on carbon number 5. In this case, going up is equatorial. So I'm going to draw in my CH2OH going up. Carbon number 4, I have an OH that's going down. Stereochemistry is retained, so the group is going to be going down on carbon number 4. And in this case, carbon number 4 is equatorial. Carbon number 3, the OH is going up. So it's going up on my chair, and it's going to be equatorial once again. Carbon number 2, my OH is going down. Down on carbon number 2 is equatorial once again. And then carbon number 1, I have a group that's going down. In this case, going down means it's axial. So just because something is going up on one Haworth doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be axial or equatorial. Those are not defined. Again, the only thing that is defined is the stereochemistry. So if something's going up on the Haworth, it's going up on my chairs. If something's going down, it's going down on my chairs as well. So if you decide to use the method in which you draw the lines ahead of time, make sure that each carbon is either attached to an OH or a hydrogen. So make sure you change the empty line to either having a hydrogen or erasing that line completely. Because if you leave that line there, then it's implied that there's a methyl group there. And that's going to be wrong. So if you draw on the lines ahead of time, make sure that you either erase the lines once you're assigning your OH groups and your CH2OH, or you attach an H towards the end so that the grader knows that it's a hydrogen you're referring to, not a methyl group. So we've got my, the first chair conformation done. And so remember, you have a chair-chair flip. And so in the chair-chair flip, all your substituents, all your carbons move counterclockwise. And so the OH used to be in the upper right-hand corner for this chair. In this chair, it's in the middle. CH2OH used to be in the middle in this chair. Now it's going to be on the upper left-hand corner. And so again, stereochemistry is retained. So anything going up on one is going up on the other. Um, but just because something is going up on one chair conformation and it's axial doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be axial in the chair-chair flip. It's the opposite that's happening. So again, carbon number 5 has a CH2OH that's going up. And this chair conformation up was equatorial. But in the chair-chair flip, going up is going to be axial. So we'll attach our CH2OH. Carbon number 4 has a group, OH, that's going equatorial, and it's going down. Carbon number 4 will still have a group going down, but in this case, it's going to be axial. Carbon number 3 has an OH that's going up and is equatorial. On my chair-chair flip, it's going to be going up and is axial. Carbon number 2 has a group that's going down and it's equatorial. On the chair-chair flip, it's also going to be going down, but in this case, it's axial. And then carbon number one has a substituent going down, so it's going down on my chair-chair flip. 
but instead of being axial, it's now going to be equatorial. And again, if you decide to keep the lines there, draw on hydrogens. If you don't want the lines there, just erase them so your grader knows that they're not methyls or that they're implied hydrogens. And so now I have my chair chair confirmations from the one Haworth projection. And so the goal is to figure out which one is more stable. So hopefully you remember from your 112A that the more stable uh, positioning of your big groups, or the hydroxyl groups in this case, is going to be on the equatorial positioning. And so you want to find out how many OHs or how many substituents you have on the equatorial. And then you want to find out how many you have on the axial. And the one that has the more substituents on the equatorial position is going to be the more stable one. So if we counter equatorial positioning in this one right here, we have one group that's equatorial, two, three, four. So I have four substituents that are equatorial. And then I have one substituent that is axial. For my chair-chair flip, I have only one substituent that's axial or sorry, that's equatorial. And then I have four others that are on the axial positioning. And since my first chair-chair confirmation has four equatorial, that means it's going to be the more stable one compared to my chair-chair flip. So if I were to draw my equilibrium arrows, they would be pushed to this confirmation more than they would for this guy. So again, if you don't remember your chair-chair confirmations, when you're flipping them, the substituents are still going in the same position. The only thing that's being flipped is if something was being axial on one chair, it's going to be equatorial on the other. And if it was equatorial on the chair to begin, begin with, it's going to be axial, hence why we get the inversions when we're calculating them. And the more stable one is going to be, one, be the one that has the hydroxyl groups, or the substituents on the equatorial positioning, because it has less sterics involved.